about cyber security. Yes, how many of you have uh, filled the form? How many of you have filled the form in, the, in your computer class? Yes, it is done by whole high school. You never done related to mobile usage. How many of you use mobile every day? Every day, please raise your hand promptly. Yes, almost uh, everyone has one more question. Please drop down. How much time per day? Anyone can you ask the only please raise your hand. Raise your hand. Anyone who uses more than one hour in this class? Yeah. Two hands. Yeah. Two hours. Two hours. Okay. Is there anyone more than when you're using mobile phone, for what purpose do you use the mobile phone? Please raise your hands. First, we can learn animation. Okay, for uh, learning through animation, right? Thank you. Calling my mother and father. Sorry? Calling my mother. Okay, you want to call your father and mother when they are out. The communication purpose, yes. Very nice. So, here to reflect on our usage of mobile phones. So before starting the session, I would like to take views of some of our students uh, and then let, let us proceed with the session. So now I would like to call up uh, Vajiha from class 7 uh, to speak about how the survey has been conducted in the school. I am Vajiha Padima from class 7 Today I am going to share my experience about the survey from we have done recently. First of all, I would like to thank the person who has sent us this survey this form helps us to know about the, how we usually use internet in our daily lives. My pleasure I have had the same feeling. We, we had nearly 50 to 55 questions in that survey form. These forms were some of the questions I remember as the time limit for time to be spent on internet, about do's and don'ts about the internet, and about even how we use internet for what purpose. These were some of the questions I remember and even I reflect myself that I reflect that in my opinion this form helps me a lot to know about what we are using in our daily life for what purpose. Is, is, in, is it important to use internet in our daily life? It even reflect my own life and my which I even reflected it my it with, it with my friends. Thank you. Good morning everyone, I am Mark Mavik from Ten Titles. So now I am going to share the impact which the survey had on me. So first of all to start off, that was a really good survey. It talked about many things and the first impact it had on me like it was, um, you know you should not share everything in the social media. It may, like it may leave the, like for example if you have a photo in the social media it will be there forever. So you should be careful while you should be careful while posting anything in the social media. Second, we talked about the screen time which we use. So while answering the questions, I was thinking about myself. You know how much time I am uh, having the phone, having the screen time. So then I was thinking about the time which I was dedicating to my studies. So I thought about it and I have decided to reduce the time which I reduce the screen time and dedicate most of it to my studies. Thank you. Related to internet. So I hope everyone, uh, those who are using mobile, that means internet access is there for everyone, right? So internet, internet is a boon as well as a curse. Do you agree? Yes, ma'am. Right? Boon. When it is a boon? When, inter when can we say that internet is a boon? For what purpose we can say that it is benefited, benefit to us? For what purpose? Like when we use? Please hand over the mic to the student so that we can answer. And what are those? Every day. So, oh, weekly, twice or thrice. Weekly, twice or thrice. Any other? Yes. And for talking to her, her parents also. Right? Communication. Of course, uh, within the country, maybe we have local networks, but when we want to talk to some relatives who are abroad or somewhere, definitely we make use of WhatsApp or some kind of uh, media to communicate. So, internet is a bone in a way that it helps in communication, it gives a lot of information, and also it helps in learning, in our education also. 
but at the same time it is a curse also. In what way do you think it is a curse? Yes. Sorry? Yes. 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 yes, very nice. Yes, you may get addicted to that. So that is a negative effect. Still, any other effect, negative effects? Social. By adapting and posting personal personal pictures in the yes. personal information. If you post personal information, so whom do you think is going to get uh, negatively affected? Is it the younger think or only younger generation? gets affected more than the other generations. The younger get more affected because their mind is still at a developing stage. And when they are at a developing stage, if they get bad influence of the internet, their mind becomes like that and their mind will also become like that. Yes, their brain is still in the developing stage. They cannot judge what is right and what is no. right. So they will take sometimes a wrong decision. And the younger people are more adversely getting affected by this internet and social media, whatever you say. Right? So, before uh, uh, whatever going ahead, I take a privilege uh, to invite our Chairman Madam, Shamata Madam, to address the gathering. Good morning, all of you. Good morning! Very good morning, Ramakari Chandra. You know, today we have a very special guest. Yes. Yes? And, uh, very proud alumnus of our school. You know that? He studied in our school three years back. Do you remember him? Yes, ma'am. Yes? Yes, ma'am. I speak traveling from all the way from USA to spread awareness about cyber security among all the children. Of course, even me too, after doing survey, we also got some knowledge. And it's so, I'm so impressed and inspired uh, with this uh, important, he took, uh, uh, with his passion and dedication, he took an important issue and uh, it's so inspiring for all of us. Uh, nowadays, today's, uh, today's uh, digital age, we are facing uh, Raj vision and we learn from his expertise. So please, already you have little bit knowledge about this, you, uh, you did survey and uh, you listen carefully and please uh, i hope you also will leave some impact on others thank you god bless you. thank you good morning everyone good morning sir uh, special welcome to the proud mother and uh, the enthusiastic son uh, grand welcome <laughs> Banner right there. He is studying in Green Hill School, Texas. He is from Texas, is it? USA. USA. Okay. He is studying in which class? Ten. Class 10. I think some of the class 10 students might be his classmates. So, very happy to uh, meet him like this because this is not a program conducted by a class 10 uh, students in the school. He has initiated, he has tied up with uh, one of the organizations called Safety is Online. So, you have to give him a big round of applause for the educated Why are you here asking him? Is it a thing sponsored by your school? He said no. Even my teacher doesn't know what I am doing. So what made him to become like this? I asked my wife, she was his uh, English teacher, his last wife. Tell me something about him. She said, she is like, he is like a bull to her. And he was calm, patient. He never uh, uh, created any problem to anyone in the school at all. And what about his academics? Even academics were at the peace. So, was he not in the class? Not at all. He was completely calm, down to earth. He used to look after his words. Then, uh, he should come into the gifted chain category. So, big round of applause to Raj. Raj, I will have to give 100% credit to his mother, 
because of uh, uh, teaching, sir, this is uh, the, this is what I personally uh, uh, trust from my bottom of my heart that mother is the first teacher, yes or no? Yes, sir. If mother teaches well, how to behave in the society? How to make your art, shape your uh, future? So there uh, our growth will start. So thank you very much, Madam, uh, for joining him like that. Definitely, Raj, we are expecting you to be somewhere where we have to come to you with a special permission or uh, or one month uh, prior invitation or permissions. Uh, thank you very much for uh, being here. It's a, it's an opportunity for us to share things with you. Dear friends, we we all know that. Uh, internet is very very important for present generation. So, IT, ICT actually, information and communication technology is actually very very crucial for us. It is leading and learning AI, artificial intelligence has become mandatory for software engineering software. But what way we are teaching the kids not to use mobile phones? How far it is relevant to it is the next question. So, we have to balance both. That is what I think we are supposed to keep in mind. It is not that you are not, say, if someone is telling you not to touch mobile phone at all, I don't uh, believe there is a point in it. Instead, so having a dedicated time, having some rules in, uh, within you, like this is what the time I am going to, a lot for my screen time and all, this is actually self discipline. So, Raj will share some of the things, uh, what he has learned, what out of his experience, definitely may help all of us uh, to be more self-disciplined. Whatever others will teach will be remaining uh, in our heart for 10, 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Once you go out of the class or once you go out of the auditorium, again, so every natural person will come out. But you have to keep things in mind. Decide this is what I am going to do from today. It is not one day process, but it is a lifetime uh, process to learn, practice, do some mistakes, rectify them, and again, so uh, try to make it uh, more meaningful. Have a meaningful life, my dear friends. Learn more, but be responsible. This is what is the message from my Welcome to Raj. Now it's a time to welcome Raj with a beautiful introduction. Welcome to Mama. Kautam Reddy is presently uh, working as a cardiologist in USA and he's the grandson of Japrada Madam and Hapa Reddy sir uh, who does multiple businesses across the Telangana, especially auto automobile showrooms. So let me give a uh, more uh, insight into his uh, into his schooling. Uh, he is currently a rising 10th grader at degree his school in Dallas, Texas. He actually involves in community programs. Uh, he is a first class scout and he is on a mission to become an eagle scout. And coming to his hobbies, uh, he is interested in swimming, playing piano. Apart from that, he is also interested in robotics, debates. Patience, discipline, focus and self-motivation are his strengths and that is making him reach his goals to a greater heights. He is a regional ambassador as said by Sir for Safe Teams which is a non-governmental organization. We want to spread awareness about cyber security and give information for the teams how to be safe while they are using social media or internet. Uh, he wants to spread the awareness across the country, that is India. So he is visiting so many schools from Telangana and also our neighboring state, Bangalore, and uh, spreading the information, whatever he has gathered. So now I invite Mr. Raj to share his opinion. Hello everyone, how is everyone doing today? Bye. Uh, okay, so first, before I start, I'd like to thank Presidency, of course, and all of you for filling out the survey. Shemantha ma'am, uh, Shagar ma'am, Pavan sir and uh, Ajit sir, all of them have been very helpful in allowing me to have this opportunity to reach out to all of you about uh, the safety and cybersecurity. 
So I guess I already had a little bio said about me, but I guess I'm Raj. I go to Greenham School in Dallas, Texas. About three years ago, I used to go to presidency, and I really enjoyed it here. So I really wanted to come back here and give this talk about uh, cyber security and cyber safety. So thank you for having me. I'm also a member of Safe Teams Online, which you've heard. So they're a global nonprofit with the goal of uh, reaching teams across the world and spread, spreading the cyber safety and cyber awareness uh, to them. And I will, as a part of their organization, I'm here today to give you a little seminar about the results of your survey and a little bit about cyber security. So first, anyone want to take a guess at what cyber security is? Is that what to say? Yeah, say it. I guess cyber security is something to be protected from the scams which are uh, getting increased nowadays. Yeah, that's a really good answer. Good job. Important is because I, uh, from the sir, questions asked earlier, we can see that almost every one of you have used technology in numerous times, right? So because of this, we're becoming more and more dependent on technology and we're having our data and other personal things stored on there. So these are some things that are very crucial that we don't want to be in the hands of malicious intenders. And this is why cybersecurity is really important. And so a few pillars that go along with cybersecurity are data protection, threat prevention, secure access, incident response and user awareness. So these are five pillars that are generally associated with cybersecurity and you'll oftentimes see them whenever uh, the topic is brought up. Okay, so these are some of the most common types of cyber attacks. So uh, before we, I talk a little bit about this, does anyone, anybody want to show by a raise of hands how many people have been affected by scams or other cyber crimes? Okay, so I see like one, two, three hands. So that's good. At least the number is really low. So for a lot of people, that's not the case because there's a lot of cyber crime that's happening in today's world. So we can see a few of the most common ones include like online scams uh, through unwanted links. The, uh, oftentimes they'll send you these links through emails or messages and ask you to send them money or something like that. And it will only end up going to that scammer account without you getting any benefit. Then there's also phishing. So phishing is a special type of scam. What they'll do in phishing is someone will impersonate another agency or another person and then ask you for your money or information. I'll give an example here. A few day, months ago, my father's credit card company or someone acting like him uh, asked him to confirm his password because apparently someone had act, hacked into his account. So he immediately sent them his password, but then once he sent the password, he realized that it was a scam and that it wasn't actually his credit card company. So what he did was he called the credit card company and got it sorted out immediately. But the problem is, in both cases, that's not what happens. Oftentimes, they'll take your uh, password, your money, and will all of these leave you like broke. Then there's also cyberbullying. So I'm sure we all know what bullying in real life is. But cyberbullying is just that, but online. So oftentimes, when we say something online, our actions uh, have a real life consequence. We don't realize this when we type a message or a comment, but someone on the other end of the screen will be taking that in a negative way. Then we also have uh, social media hacking. So social media hacking is when a hacker takes over your social media account and then sends messages to everyone in your contact list, asking them for either money or data or something of that sort. I'll give an example here as well. My mom's Instagram account was recently hacked and the hacker sent messages to everyone in her Instagram account saying uh, that she needed money for something. But in reality, she didn't even know this was happening. So luckily for her, one of her friends told her about it and she immediately posted on all of her socials telling people that the, um, a message saying that she needed money was completely false. Again, while this, uh, she got lucky with this, a lot of times that's not what happens. Then there's also fake versions of mobile, popular mobile apps. So, how, what are some popular games that you guys like to play? Which one? Yeah. Minecraft, yeah. So, a lot of times, what happens on the app store is they put up fake versions of these. So, like fake Minecraft, fake Free Fire, fake Puppy, all of that. They put them on the app store and then they try to get you to download that instead of the real version. 
So when they try to do this, they'll only try, we try to take their information or your money, and you'll also just be left broken again. And then there's also delivery scam. So I'm sure everyone here has heard of like Zomato, Sweeney, and Amazon, right? So they they often give you an option for a cash or delivery payment method. And what the, these drivers will sometimes do is when you uh, click the payment method, they'll send you a message uh, a few days ahead of time saying, how about instead of paying me on uh, your what I get there, I'll pay me via this link and I, you won't have to worry about it. In, instead of this payment going to your product or whatever it is you ordered, it'll always just go to their personal bank accounts or whatever scam fund they have. So that's another popular way of getting scams. And then finally, there's also work scams. So work scams are when uh, scammers message you saying, if you work for us for this amount of hours, we'll give you this amount of money. But in reality, what happens is they often just end up taking your money and overworking you, or just asking you for more money in exchange for just no return. And then one thing to keep in mind at the end of the day for all scams is that the main reason they're scamming you or trying to take advantage of you is to get either your money or your data. Because those two are some of the most valuable things that you guys have online. So that's one thing to always keep in mind. A couple of true or false questions, and you just have to answer them. So, when you delete a photo from social media, is it gone permanently? True or false? <laughs> yeah, good job. So, the reason behind this is because, let's say, even if you delete it, it can always be stored on another company's database. And oftentimes, you won't have access to this database, and you can't delete it. Then, there's also the other chance that people you don't know of are taking pictures of this post or something that you put online, and you can't always get them to delete it as well. So the, they could also have that picture without you ever knowing. Okay, so here's another one. You can always delete anything that's posted on the internet. True or false? What if it's endorsed by a celebrity or someone famous? Is it still true, uh, true false? Okay. Yeah. That's because even if uh, anyone and everyone can post something on the internet. So even if someone famous endorses it, it doesn't always make it true because they're not always the subject matter experts. So I'll give an example for this one as well. A few years back, a famous uh, basketball player in the US believed that the Earth was flat. And then I think we could all agree here that the Earth isn't flat and it's a globe, right? So he convinced his entire fan base that the Earth was flat. And now, after two years, he realized that the Earth is round. So we have to convince his entire fan base that the Earth isn't flat. And a lot of his fans still don't believe him. So that's, it's a really big issue that happens. Okay, now we can talk a little bit about the survey. So I think everyone in here has filled out the survey. So thank you all so much for that. And then we had like 785 responses. So that's a really huge number. And then, so based on the results of that survey, we can see that class uh, seven members you guys have the highest online presence, so I guess this is mainly for you guys. So, and then also from the survey, you can see that the male students had a higher online presence as well compared to female students by a pretty decently sized margin. So, okay. And then about on average, seventy percent of the school spends two hours or online every day after school. So. I think at the start of the survey, uh, sorry, at the start of the seminar, okay. And now on, on to some takeaways from the survey. So about 50% of students are knowledgeable about asking permission before posting French photos online. So that's something that's really good because taking their permission before sharing, we're acknowledging that we are respectful of their boundaries and other things like that. So it's a really good practice to have to ask your friends before sharing their photos online. And then. Uh, about 55 students, 55 uh, percent of students are knowledgeable about uh, not sharing passwords. However, only 20 percent of you guys log out of public computers. So it's a good thing that you guys are not sharing passwords because that is again like private information. I mean, of course you can share with those who can easily access it without you ever knowing. And then more than 70 percent of students are careful about not sharing personal information online. That's a really good number because, again, similar to how it's like not sharing friends' information without their permission, you don't want to be putting your information online without, uh, especially like sensitive information, without knowing what you're sharing. But uh, more than 40 students of, uh, percent of students are careful about which friend request to accept. That's a good-sized number, but we also want to get that up too, because 
Uh, we don't, we, unless we know who the pe uh, friend is, like the friend request is in person, it's not always a great idea to accept them because you never know who's trying to talk with you or who's trying to get in touch with you. So it's always a good idea to verify this as before. And then also, uh, I think we saw this when I asked the question about who had experienced scams, there are only a few of you. But about 70% of you have not experienced any digital thefts or online. However, almost 30% uh, of you have had your devices infected with a virus. So this is a point I'll touch back on later, but uh, there's steps you can take to go like decreasing this number by such as installing antivirus, uh, scanning the files they're using before you uh, open them up and other things like that. Then, uh, almost 40% of students believe that online information is legitimate if a, cele a celebrity endorses it. I think at least in this classroom right now, we saw that that's probably not the case. Most of you realize that uh, even if a celebrity endorses it, it doesn't always make it true. But we should always try to verify our sources another time before uh, believing them. So I'll ask one more question here. How many of you guys use your phones or the internet for school purposes, like science projects or things like that? Okay, so pretty much all of you. So how many of you guys make sure to verify your sources before you use that source? So that's a number we want to get up because verifying your sources to verify sources include checking with the .gov or .edu because oftentimes it, .gov is a government site and that's trustworthy or .edu is a school site. Okay, so now more than 60% uh, of your students believe that engaging in chatting on social media or downloading files does not leave a digital footprint. However, about 30% believe that uh, writing a story does leave a digital footprint. So, does anybody want to take a guess what a digital footprint is? Yeah. So one thing you want to keep up, uh, to keep in mind about your digital footprint is that anyone and everyone can view it pretty much like easily. So it's akin to your identity in real life, and you don't want that to be easily like you don't want that to be negatively viewed of you. So it's a good idea to always make sure of, and be careful about what you're viewing online and what uh, types of files you're downloading. And then on the other hand, the writing a story on a piece of paper generally doesn't translate into leaving an uh, impact on your digital footprint. Because when you write something on a piece of paper, it's probably going to stay in the physical world and not enter the digital world. Unless you obviously like make a post of it or something like that. And then we also see that about 60% of the students did not know that leaving a digital footprint can leave their identity in jeopardy. Again, so your digital footprint is akin to, uh, to that of your identity in real life. So, and because it's such like publicly viewed information, it can always be accessed and always be used against you. So you always want to keep in mind what you're saying and what you're doing at online because it can, again, like all the new videos. And then the next points are about uh, the uh, help that students receive from their parents and teachers. About 50% receive help from their parents and 70% from their teachers. That, those are two really good numbers because in today's digital world, we oftentimes, the people we can trust the most are our parents and our teachers because they know the most about the subject. And we always want to take their help before deciding to do anything. And then about 70% of students have not heard anyone online. Now, that's a really good number because I don't think anyone here wants to hurt anyone in person. And that probably doesn't translate over to online as well. So that's a good number, which we can bring up, I believe. But uh, for right now, that's a really good number. Good job. OK, so now for some best practices that you guys can use. So first, before I uh, talk about these best practices, does anyone have any practices that they, practices that they use online regularly to uh, decrease their risk of getting scammed or hacked? Okay, yeah. So, so we're, uh, like building off of what he said, using strong passwords and using two-factor authentication, those are two really good ways of uh, decreasing your risk of getting hacked or scammed because it makes it a lot harder for people to view your information when you use things such as two-factor authentication. Uh, for a little explanation of what two-factor authentication is, it's basically, in addition to having to put your password in when you log into an account, it will also send a notification to your phone or your email 
I would say telling them that someone is trying to access their account, this makes it easier uh, for you to know who's trying to gain access or use your uh, personal accounts and other things, such things, because it will always notify you before someone tries to log in. Then there's also keeping your password and login information safe. I think all of you guys already do that, but it's just something to keep in mind for the future. Then there's also being mindful of who you're accepting files from because you never know what type of files could be sent to you. Like for example, someone could be just sending you a zip bomb. And a little bit of what a zip bomb is. So you guys know how there's like megabytes, uh, terabytes, yeah. So sometimes what people will do is they'll compress huge amounts of data, like petabytes of data, into a small zip file. And then they'll send it over to you. And then when you open this file, it'll crash your computer. So it's not something you always want to deal with because a crash computer is just terrible for anyone. So always be careful about who you're accepting files from. And then finally, also, uh, just remember to install and use antivirus regularly. I think he said it back there, but you always want to have a software installed on your device to protect against viruses and scan software before you use them. And then some more practices are just don't meet up with people you meet online unless you know them in person and you have like your parents' permission. Because oftentimes when someone says there's like a nice and kind person online, it doesn't always translate over to that in person. So you always want to be careful of who you're meeting up with uh, in the online world versus the real world. And then also know what to share and know what, to sh uh, what not to share. I think, again, you guys have all shown that you know uh, you have a good idea of what type of information you are, you should be sharing and what's not a great idea to share online. And then also, so screen time is another thing. I think all of you guys generally restrict it to like two hours, but anything over that or can all, all lead to like mood swings and emotional changes because when we're addicted to our social, like social media and other things online on our phones, it can uh, disrupt our view of the world and also hurt our relationship with our family and uh, loved ones. So always try to limit your screen time and spend as much time as you can in the real world and outside of like all like social media and uh, YouTube and other such things. And then also in addition to that, just remember to keep your elders and grandparents in the loop because if you really think about it, the social like the online world has only been here for about 30 years. Before that, no one really had any experience with Facebook or Instagram or any of those things. So we always want to keep our elders in the loop because uh, they're, in addition to ourselves, they're also the ones who are most likely to get uh, affected by these scams and other uh, like harms online. So just remember to keep them in the loop. And then finally, just remember to keep your social media accounts private and secure because again, there's social media hackers like what happened to my mom and other such things that you don't want to be happening to your social media account. So it's just a good idea to keep them, keep your account private and secure. Okay, and then, so here's some help and resources. The first number you see is uh, 1930. If you want, you can take a note of this because this is a really important number for when you're affected by a cyber crime. So uh, think about how when, you, uh, when there's a crime, you would call the police at 100 or the ambulance at 108, right? So similar to that, there's 1930, which is for cyber crime. This is a government-funded number, so they'll always give you instructions on what to do and uh, like step-by-step -step help on how to deal with the situation you're in. This is a really good number because unlike the US or other major countries, they don't really advertise it as much. Whereas in India, it's like something that they try to get out there so that people know about it. So it's always a good resource. And then in addition to that, there's also the official cyber crime website of, the, of India which is cybercrime.gov.in. So those two are some really valuable resources if you ever get affected by scams or uh, cybercrime. And then there's also, if you want to spread awareness like me and become an ambassador for SEO, you can always contact my email I just right here. Um, so that's always an option if you want to get more any questions or doubts about cybersecurity or cybercrime from the presentation that I can clarify now. Yeah. They'll still try to offer you help, because even if they don't respond in the first uh, first try, it's still a good idea to keep contacting them, because it's, better, it's a resource that you have, and in addition to that, you can also look at the website for cybercrime. The complaint, the website, and quality, the number of cybersecurity. Oh, they didn't respond? Yes. Okay, so um, then in that case, there's, I guess, not much we can do, because sometimes, um, 
it becomes out of our reach once it exceeds like a certain amount of time. So I guess it's just an unfortunate circumstance. So sorry about that. Did you uh, happen to contact the bank or anything like after it happens? You contact? Okay. Yeah. Sometimes it's just unfortunate. Okay. Like I ordered something on the online, so they gave me some number to order that. Okay, uh, but I didn't get that things later. I understood that. Okay, I had lost that because uh, like, yeah, it's very good program, Raj. It's very useful. Thank you. Just uh, keep uh, letting your parents know about it, and also just keeping an eye out for any suspicious activity or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so sometimes what viruses will file or something like that, that it might bypass the antivirus, but sometimes like our own human uh, intellect or like knowledge will be able to see that it's not uh, it's a scam and not exactly like a safe thing to download. So, yeah. We have new technology and AI, why the scams are going still? Oh, so uh, we go, at the same rate that we're improving, they're improving. So, as uh, long as we continue to combat things, they're just going to keep getting at more and more advanced. So, we're trying to become like double the rate at uh, which they're progressing. So, if we're faster than uh, how they progress, then we can stop them first before they continue to work. You just have to keep an eye out for suspicious activity and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But suddenly it started to serve it is not a thing, sir. Okay, so sometimes that's not always a scam that happens there. It might have also just been like uh, a manufacturing defect because those are also like common and they can happen. Um, if it was a scam, then I'm not 100% sure of why that might have happened because it could be a form of ransomware where they're trying to uh, like seize your device until you pay them X amount of money. But from what I'm hearing, I don't think that's the case, right? But uh, only when we open the social media, it's happening. Okay. Not other, that's only social media. Then, is the manufacturing defect. I'm not 100% sure why that's happening. So. Okay, so thank you everyone for your time. Mom, Chandra. Hi, Chandra. And it's a great pleasure for me and all of us to be here today because Raj was one among you guys a few years ago. And uh, I'm so proud that, thanks to presidency, Raj is doing, uh, you know, he's, he's able to be here. As I mentioned, 90% of the credit goes to the mother. We, we owe a lot, our family owes a lot to presidency because it's been a blessing for us. Raj and Neela, both my kids went to presidency a few years ago and they went to school in the US and uh, as soon as they came here, it was a real blessing for us to find presidency on par with the US schools and uh, you know, I, the best thing I like about presidency is it's not just focused on academics, I think uh, they focus on overall development of a child. Real uh, thank you to Chairperson Shamata Ma'am, Shravya Ma'am and Ajit Sir because they have put the whole team here, the teachers, the principal and you can see that the students um, in the participation level today, I was very impressed. You guys are amazing. You are an amazing audience. I think you guys are very curious. I saw a lot of questions today, so that shows that you're paying attention and you're trying to learn, um, which you know is a great quality among all of you. And uh, we have a memento for uh, the school and uh, Shamata Ma'am to show our appreciation for giving Raj an opportunity to present here and uh, spread awareness about cyber security. And also a big thank you to all the students and the teachers for conducting the survey because we got the maximum uh, responses from presidency among all the schools he's conducted across India. So he's been to uh, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Telangana, various schools in Hyderabad and Nizamabad also, but 
You guys really rock the server. Thank you. Are you inspired children? It is a continuous support. Your discipline. With his discipline, he is here today. So I want to see you guys also in the same way. Is it going to happen? Yes! yes. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tyler. Now. Yes. Uh, I told you. You don't know that? No. Yeah, he is a child now. I know a lot of him. I think you didn't pay attention when Sir spoke with you. Okay, it's understandable because a lot of people think he's an IT employee looking at him and his life sometimes. So it's not your fault. And um, yeah, I think the, low, the motto for presidency is to ignite curious minds, and I think it's living up to that motto. When I see all of you, it's reflected in your behavior. And Thank you. Yeah, definitely, as the chairman madam mentioned. At least I got inspired to spread this awareness. Let me know Raj if there is a group called Save Adults Online. I definitely try to join because you know I have been into tech and you know I am a uh, tech graduate and I use tech in every day in my life. But see I get attacked online at least once or twice in a year. So I need this like entire, entire organizing this uh, whole survey and you know presenting the data with this is very relevant and uh, also interacting and questioning all their answers. Uh, I want to mention Jodin Raj, Jayapana Madam for blessing this uh, event. I also thank all our teachers uh, who have been helping Raj with this survey and also conducting this event. Thank you. I wish at least 15 out of 150 students in this room take up Raj's mission. What is his mission? Yes, yes. So, you know, you know, you learn so much from this session, right? And I wish you take this message forward to your parents, your, your, your fellow mates, your classmates, uh, people who are in your same age group, right? Okay. Uh, with this, uh, we conclude this session. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you. Hello, my name is Raj. I am US Green Hill School 10th class member. I am also Safe Teams Online and a global non-profit organization. So, the organization mission is to talk about teenagers about cyber security and cyber awareness. So, our organization is here. This school, Presidency School, I was here three years ago. This school is very helpful. They are focused on academics and focus on the students. So, it is very helpful. It is very helpful. So, this day, a few weeks back, I conducted a survey. I conducted a survey on the students. They had online use and cyber awareness. This day, I conducted a seminar. In that seminar, I talked about the survey and the best practices and cyber crime. So, thank you. My voice is clear. Hi, I am Pavan Kumar, Principal Presidency High School. Today, I am here with Raja. I am here with Raja. I am here with Raja. Raja is actually a Presidency student. I am here in the 10th class of US. And Teen Safe online program के संबंध में जो का society थी अतना tie up आई he has done a good job like giving awareness to different people in different countries especially India लो different states के लिए 
వాళ్ళందరికీ సైబర్ సెక్యూరిటీ మీద చాలా అవేర్నెస్ ఇవ్వాలని ప్రయత్నిస్తున్నాడు సో హీ హీ స్టార్టింగ్ దిస్ ఫ్రమ్ నిజామాబాద్ ఎందుకంటే అతను మన నిజామాబాద్లో ప్రెసిడెన్సీ నుంచి చదువుకున్నాడు కాబట్టి ఈ ఇనిషియేటివ్ నిజామాబాద్ నుంచి ఇవ్వాలని స్టార్ట్ చేశాడు సో అతని సంకల్పం జనాలందరికీ వెళ్ళాలని ప్రతి ఒక్కళ్ళ మార్పు తీసుకురావాలని సొసైటీలో అతను చేసే పని వల్ల కొంత ఇంపాక్ట్ రావాలని మనస్ఫూర్తిగా అతన్ని ఆశీర్వదిస్తున్నాం సో చైర్పర్సన్ మేడం మేము మేమందరం అతని వెంటుంటాం ఎనీ ఎనీ సార్ట్ ఆఫ్ హెల్ప్ ఫ్రమ్ అవర్ అండ్ డెఫినెట్లీ విల్ డూ ఇట్ అండ్ ఆ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆల్సో హ్యావ్ పార్టిసిపేట్ మా స్టూడెంట్స్ కూడా చాలా ఎంతూజియాసంతో పార్టిసిపేట్ చేశారు మేము కూడా వీళ్ళంతా ఈ పాయింట్ని స్ప్రెడ్ చేయడానికి ట్రై చేస్తాం థ్యాంక్ యూ రాజ్ వాళ్ళకి సపోర్ట్ చేసిన వాళ్ళ తల్లిదండ్రులకి మిగతా వాళ్ళ శ్రేయోభిలాషులందరికీ మరొకసారి అభినందనలు థ్యాంక్ యూ శమంత అందరికీ నమస్కారం నేను ప్రెసిడెన్సీ స్కూల్ ఫౌండర్ అండ్ చైర్పర్సన్ రాజ్ రాజ్ ఇక్కడనే నిజామాబాద్లో మన స్కూల్లోనే చదివాడు చదివి తర్వాత యుఎస్ వెళ్ళి మళ్ళీ యుఎస్ నుంచి ఒకరోజు కాల్ చేసినాడు నా ఈ చైల్డ్ సెక్యూరిటీ అవేర్నెస్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ స్టార్ట్ చేస్తున్నాను ఇండియాలో నా హాలిడేస్లో ఈ ప్రోగ్రామ్ తీసుకున్నానని దెన్ ఐ సెట్ ఐ ఫీల్ట్ వెరీ హ్యాపీ బికాస్ మన స్కూల్లోనూ చదివి అంత అంత బాగా మళ్ళీ ఆయన ఓన్గా ఈ ప్రాజెక్ట్ తీసుకొని మళ్ళీ నిజామాబాద్ నిజామాబాద్ కాకుండా మళ్ళీ కొన్ని డిఫరెంట్ స్టేట్స్ని కూడా సెలెక్ట్ చేసుకున్నాడు నిజామాబాద్లో కొన్ని స్కూల్లో కూడా చేసినాడు చేస్తున్నాడు ఈ ప్రోగ్రాము అండ్ ఈ అవేర్నెస్ వల్ల పిల్లలకి చాలా ఎందుకంటే పిల్లలు ఈ ఎక్కువ ఫోన్స్ యూజ్ చేస్తారు ఇంటర్నెట్ యూజ్ చేస్తారు సో దానివల్ల చాలా ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ ఈ మధ్య చాలా క్రైమ్స్ వినబడతా ఉన్నాయి సైబర్ క్రైమ్స్ సో పిల్లలకి చాలా ఇన్ఫర్మేటివ్గా ఉండే ఈ ప్రోగ్రాము మాకు కూడా చాలా నచ్చింది ఎందుకంటే ఇది ప్రతి పాయింట్ ఏదైతే రాజ్ చెప్పినాడో అది చాలా యూస్ఫుల్గా ఉంది అండ్ అవన్నీ జరిగినాయి కూడా ఈవెన్ నాకు కూడా ఒక కాల్ వచ్చింది ఇలానే అండ్ ఈవెన్ సో ఏదో ఆన్లైన్లో తీసుకోవాలి ఇంతకైతే బాగుంటుందంటే నేను కూడా సరే అని ఆలోచించకుండా ఐ పేడ్ మనీ బట్ ఐ డింట్ గెట్ దాట్ బట్ దట్ వాజ్ ఎ స్మాల్ అమౌంట్ బట్ ఇది చాలామందికి ఈ మధ్య ప్రాబ్లం ఫేస్ చేస్తున్నారు సో విచ్ ఈస్ ఎ వెరీ గుడ్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ అండ్ ఐ కంగ్రాచులేట్ రాజ్ అండ్ బికాస్ ఇక్కడనే చదివి మళ్ళీ ఇక్కడ కూడా చెప్పాలని ఉద్దేశంతో ఇక్కడికి వచ్చినాడైతే ఇట్స్ వెరీ గుడ్ ఇట్స్ అ వెరీ గుడ్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ అండ్ ఐ థ్యాంక్ యూ